Hello, my name is Michael. Um, I've had a few YouTube accounts in the past, but uh, because of some issues, I had to um, move some of my stuff around. Um, and because they connect, Google connects the two accounts. Um, uh, this was the only option I had was to create a whole new YouTube account. So, um, just to give you a little bit about me, I am a conservative Protestant. Um, I support the certain forms of the ecumenical movement. Um, I'm a member of the Sons of God. Um, I'm a worship leader at my church. Um, I'm an author. Uh, that's a pretty good basis just to get to know me. I'm in my early 20s and um, I'll be a minister, a licensed minister uh, within the year. Um, I'm graduating this semester. Uh, with a master major um, in church ministry and a, and a associates in um, history, uh, and I'll go on to earn my master's. Uh, I start in the fall. Um, today, what we're going to be talking about is uh, an issue with with Bible study, and what I would like to do is, Lord willing, I would like to upload four videos a month, one per week, and um, talk about really a wide variety of different things. Um, I would like to talk about Bible study or issues that talk about Bible study, like for instance, um, either study a certain book of the Bible or discuss um, what steps are needed uh, to study that book. Um, and really that kind of, that kind of a, uh, a feel, uh, pretty much just things that have to do with Bible study. Um, things like hermeneutics and exegesis, if you know what that is. Um, and then on other weeks, I would like to talk about music. Um, on other weeks, I'd like to talk about theology and apologetics um, and news like that. Um, so first, uh, because there won't be a news uh, video this month, I, I think I'd like to throw it in now. Um, we, I am finishing. <clears throat> I am finishing the CD that I've been working on. Um, it's low quality, uh, but I did have a lot of help. Um, one of my friends recorded it for free, another one's doing the artwork for free, and another one uh, it did the mastering for free. Um, so although it has some mess ups here and there, um, it, it overall it's 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 well done. Uh, we were all worked real hard at it. Um, it's not exactly what you'd find from a record company, but we really did the best with that we could with what we had. Um, and a hundred percent of the funds that we receive um, from the sales of that CD are going to go straight to um, <clears throat> straight to uh, Royal Family Kids Camp, uh, which is which is a really neat uh, a nonprofit uh, organization. What they do is they have camps uh, for foster kids, um, and it gives them hope, and it gives them you know um, just a time of people pouring into their lives. Uh, and if you know anything about the foster system, uh, that's in many cases that's kind of rare. You know, and, and even if they do find someone who's a good foster parent, which, you know, I know that there are a lot of good foster parents out there, and I know it's a very difficult to be a foster parent. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to rag on you. It's just, it's a broken system because it uses broken people. I mean, anytime, like, for instance, uh, Teen Challenge, uh, you know, it's a good idea. It's just, you're dealing with broken people. Uh, the root of the issue is we need to be uh, healing and repairing families. But obviously, that's... In some cases like this, can't happen. Sometimes uh, people don't let that happen. So you really have to have to do the best with what you got. And uh, so that's what this organization is. Uh, just spend spend some time to pour into those kids. I, I I can't imagine how hard it must be to have your life torn away, even if it was a crappy one. I mean. To have a house that was your own, even if it's in despair, and then have it taken away, I, I, uh, I personally have no idea how that must feel. Um, so we're really, you're really dealing with 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 people, young people, young kids, innocent people, uh, who've had their lives really stripped away from them, uh, and that's what the CD is going towards. 100%. We're not keeping anything. Um, everything we did, we we gave up our own time and our own uh, finances to get the project going. Um, we did not get anyone else's help. We just did it ourselves, just the four of us. Um, 
and uh, and so we're selling that uh, right now. Uh, it's still we're still finishing some stuff up with the master, and then it goes off to be copyrighted. Uh, and uh, the other guys working on the uh, are actually finishing the the artwork and the CD casing and everything uh, as we speak. Um, so it should be ready to sell. We're hoping to start uh, start sales on April first. I know April Fool's Day, but um, uh, that of course is subject to change. Right now it looks like it's going to be about eight bucks to buy it uh, in person, and if you want it shipped somewhere, that that's probably going to cost. I'm thinking around like ten or eleven dollars, and we'll just. I don't want to charge too much, so probably like. Ten or eleven dollars, uh, and then we'll just you know maybe bite just just go ahead and bite the the excess uh, if it charges more than if a shipping costs more than that. But like I said, we're not keeping any of the any of the funds. Everything that we make is going to the Royal Family Kids Camp. Um, I have a I have a uh, I, I know someone from college who's actually hosting. Uh, uh, foster the, the Royal Family Kids Camp in um, the Dallas area, just south of that. Um, yeah, really, just really doing some great things for those foster kids, uh, and so I wanted to be a part of it. And I, I'm not very good with kids, and I'm not very good with you know um, dealing with people who are hurting like that. I I don't really know what to say, so uh, I did what uh, what I could do, um, music, and. Uh, so you know the CD has a few a few things, um, and also uh, with the CD, try to keep an open mind. Um, a lot of the songs don't sound quote unquote biblical. Uh, it's because it's a story. The songs are meant to be taken as a whole, not as individuals. Um, like some of the songs will say something, and a later song will answer it. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. Um, and then there's some things where it seems like I'm implying things that are unscriptural, and I don't mean it like that at all. Uh, like one part, uh, it's on the song called The Fortress, and it's um, about someone going through panic attacks. And it says in the song, um, the world keeps going on. You know, uh, it's, not, it's not meant to be taken in a way as the world will always be there, because, you know, we all know that the end will come. Um, or at least... Let me reword that. Those of us in the Sunday of God Church and in other churches um, know that the end is coming. Uh, so, in no way did I mean to imply that I didn't think that the rapture of the church was ever going to happen. Um, I meant more of in the sense of you know, if you, when you're having a panic attack, it seems like the end is there. You know, you're you're dying. You're going to die or something, and it's just you know, step back and take a deep breath and, you know, realize it's not the end of the world. You're going to get through this, you know. I meant it more in that kind of a sense. And there's a few little things in the, in the CD like that where it sounds like I'm saying something bad. Um, just remember that I am I am a, a conservative Pentecostal. Um, and so if it seems like I'm applying something like that, you can pretty much assume that I'm not. Um... There was another part on the CD, I can't remember what it was, but it, I was listening to it, um, and I was thinking, ooh, that doesn't sound good. Uh, but I think I think you guys will get the hang of it. So, <clears throat> sorry for the boringness, or not boringness, whatever. Uh, that's really the only news that I can think of for now. Uh, I'll update you with any more info uh, in next month's news video. So, uh, we're going to be talking about... Uh, Bible study. And before we actually get into studying a specific book, um, I want to talk about the idea of how to do Bible study. Um, oftentimes, you know, people take things out of context or they say, well, the King James Version only. And, well, you know, some things seem to contradict each other. And how do you work past all the errors and all this stuff? Well, I'm glad you asked. That what, That's what these videos are for, um, these how to study or Bible study videos. Um, hopefully it'll give you a better understanding of the Bible as a whole. Today's lesson is going to be pretty short because it also includes the news one, but we'll pick up next lesson where we leave off here. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll deal with contradictions um, in the Bible, you know, uh, how that they're not actually contradictions. We'll deal with tough situ tough topics in the theology and apologetic section like homosexuality, drinking, uh, doing drugs, that kind of thing. Um, 
<laughs> sex, those, those kinds of things. Um, I, I want to touch on some things that people may not get from the pew because it's not really considered something you should talk about in church, like, you know, like I said, addiction, uh, stuff like that. Um, but anyways, um, so why is it necessary to learn how to study the Bible? Well, um, for those of you who've taken any kind of a, really a basic uh, a lit class, they teach you about analysis and how you need to, um, you know, study the, they think they call it the cultural milieu and different things like that, uh, where you really <clears throat> look at the look at the book and its setting and what was going on at the time that the author was writing about. And then you have people like Ernest Hemingway who have like these layers of meaning and stuff. And you have to do these, uh, these certain specific types of analysis and you can't just take it for what you think it means now. You have to include all these different things with the author and the time and all these different things. And it's the same idea with the Bible. Um, reading the Bible is good, but the more you mature, the more that reading should turn into meditation, should turn into study, should turn into something deeper. Um, Hebrews talks about this, the, the Christian who's still stuck on meat. I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> milk. Christian who's still stuck on milk. And that's exactly the idea is getting past that milk stage and into actually some solid milk where you can read the Bible, understand what he's talking about, understand the principle, and learn how to apply it to your life now. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to be using a lot from uh, it's a book called Grasping God's Word. It's by uh, J. Scott Duvall uh, and J. Daniel uh, Hayes. It was um, done by Zondervan. Uh, I'm personally using the second edition. Um, if you want to check it out, it's a very good book. I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Um, in fact, it's probably one of, if not my favorite, uh, hermeneutic books. And, and all that hermeneutics, hermeneutics really means is, um, in basic speech, how to understand the Bible. That's what people mean when they're um, talking about it in Bible study. Hermeneutics, uh, uh, interpreting the Bible, uh, you know, uh, finding out what it means. Um, so it's necessary because people's worldview change from place to place, you know, from different areas in the world, different people, different people have different worldviews. Um, even within like uh, one country, there'll be people with, with drastically different opinions. Think about America. You know, you have the Democrats and the Republicans, and you know, of course, you have people in the middle and people farther on each side. But basically, you have these constant clashings between the liberals and the conservatives, constantly back and forth and back and forth. Um, and they may be in the same country, but they still have such drastic different world views. Um, you know, and I'm sure things came to mind, be it uh, with the world, you know, um, um, you know, uh, oil, stuff like that, or be it with uh, moral issues such as abortion and thing, things like that, uh, you know. Um, so from time to time, from, from place to place it changes, but also from time to time. Um, you know, uh, science, science brings us to certain places and different things bring us to different places to where really our, our worldview changes with time, you know. Um, some things in science we understand now that we didn't before um, that has really changed how we look out on the world. Um, uh, a good example of this is thousands and thousands of years back, slavery really wasn't that, I don't want to say bad of a thing because that makes it sound like I'm endorsing it, I'm not. It wasn't that big of an issue at the time. Um, having multiple wives really wasn't that big of an issue at the time. Uh, an older man marrying a young girl, like we're talking about like 12 years old, and so uh, really wasn't that big of a deal to them. And in some places of the world, it still isn't. Uh, so you just see that there's this, this drastic difference between then and now. Uh, and we can only imagine where things will be in the future. Um, so our conduct and our manner of speech and our lifestyle, these things change. And so if we don't learn how to read the Bible in its context, we lose what, the th what it's saying, and we can hold people to standards that the Bible is not expecting. As well, we can overlook the message that it's saying and assume that it's saying something else when it's not. Um, you know, or, or justify or condemn our acts based on a translation rather than what the original manuscripts even said. So really there's a bunch of different issues. Um, uh, and really we're going to stop there.
but I just want you to think about that, you know, um, translations and all these different things, they're all something to, to consider. The historical setting, uh, the, uh, the anal analysis of the words themselves, there's just so many different factors that we need to take, in, take into account and figure out what was the author intending. You know, it, it, if you don't believe the Bible, that's one thing. You know, if, if, if you think it's inaccurate, that's one thing. But do the groundwork first, okay? Find out, is it accurate or is it not? Um, did the author actually intend to me intend for this meaning? You know, figure out that stuff and then draw out. You know, like for instance, the argument with homosexuality. What did the author mean at the time? Okay, and then now once again, I'm not condoning or condemning at this time. We'll talk about homosexuality some other time. Um, but what did the author intend at the time? Um, and then say if you disagree with it or not. But sometimes we just read it blank blank point blank and immediately transfer it into the here and now to this culture and just go crazy with it and it's like you know calm down with that you know uh, you should read a book in its context you should read things in its context think about how many times you get in a fight with someone and now pretend that it was in a different location with a different person and you were saying the exact same things see what I mean even that would change drastically what you meant um, uh, think about when you say say someone thank you, like tell someone thank you, and you're actually sincere, thank you. But then when you're sarcastic, yeah, thank you, you know, or like um, when you're angry, thank you, you know what I mean? Like there's just so many different ways um, of, of that something could be understood. Um, so just something to think about, and um, we'll plow ahead next week. We're going to be talking about. You know, the video will be something to do with music. Either I'll be showing you music, so showing you something about music theory, or I'll be um, discussing how to play a song, or I'll be um, uh, uh, singing you one of my songs, or I'll be covering a song. Um, so we'll see where that goes. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, have a great, uh, have a great week, and uh, I hope your New Year is going great. See ya.